Geronimo here. Guys, we are going to talk a little bit today about philosophy, okay? So what am I talking about exactly? Well, we all have different things that we think about life. We think about, you know, our finances, our relationships, our body, all different areas. And our philosophy controls what happens in our life. Last weekend, I was out in a, an event. It was a personal development event and it was hosted by a friend of mine who's been very, very successful. And so we were learning some different things about online marketing, about, you know, basically how to position yourself with your net network marketing company, just a lot of different, like 10,000 foot view information. Okay. And while we were there, we met a couple who happens to be network marketing legends. Okay. Um, I'm, who am I talking about? I'm talking about Larry and Taylor Thompson. Okay. Now Larry Thompson has been in network marketing for 40 years. Okay. Just imagine like if you saw, I don't know if you've lived in your city for very long. Um, but sometimes you see things evolve, you see things change, you see things, things grow, you see just, I don't know, just an evolution of what happens, right? And it was just so interesting. We got to spend time with them earlier today. We got to spend brunch with them. This is a guy, not only, I don't even know how much he's made in network marketing, but many millions, like maybe a hundred million, maybe more. I'm not really sure. We didn't get into the details, but what I found fascinating was he had spent nine years traveling and opening up different countries with Jim Rohn. Now, if you don't know who Jim Rohn is, we need to have a conversation, but Jim Rohn is probably the foremost, the leading philosopher in, in the network marketing space and just in personal development in general. He's like the grandfather of personal development and it was just so incredible because most of the time that we spent together, we were talking about philosophy. We were talking about the 10,000 foot view, the concepts, the, the ideas of how we view things and how we share things in our marketplace. And it was just so very interesting and so very thought provoking. And it just got me thinking about, you know, how, how we view things in life, right? We have philosophies around everything uh, that's out there. We have philosophies around how we look, right? Like our body, are we taking care of our health? or are we letting it go by the wayside? We have philosophies about our relationships. Some people, husband and wife stuff, they have the most on fire, intimate, just crazy, chase each other around the house relationship. And other people, they've been married a year and you're like, eh, yeah, you know, like they don't have that, right? We have philosophies about how we work, how we make a living, right? Some people, they work and they get paid and they're literally exchanging time for dollars and it's not a very scalable way to live because if they don't work, what happens? They don't get paid, right? So just our philosophies of life, they play into everything. Philosophies with our finances. You know, so much of my adult life, I've spent time studying people that, you know, became millionaires and, and even, you know, decamillionaires and just really changed their, their family's financial future with how they handle money. You know, money has connotations with it, right? Some of us have, you know, we feel great about it. And some of us have a lot of baggage when it comes to money. Like we think, you know, money is bad or it's evil. And we just have philosophies around that part of our life. And, you know, it's so interesting because if we don't change our programming, if we don't change the philosophies that hang out between our ears, the world will program us just by default, okay? How do we get programmed? We get programmed by the news media, right? <laughs> Certainly we saw that take place during this last presidential election, right? We get programmed by, you know, just what's going on on TV, what's going on in the news, what's going on in the latest movies, right? Like, if we don't control what takes place here, the world will control it for us. And you know what's interesting is at the end of the day, 98% of the population either ends up when they are 65 years old, they end up, they're either gone, like they're dead, right? They are broke. They got minimal money saved up and, and not, not much for retirement or the worst part, they are still working. So what, what, what are we going to do about this? Right? How are we going to change this for us in our life? You know, sometimes I have people that'll, they'll say to me, Hey, how's it going? Hey, I'm working hard, working hard. I'm like, Hey, hey stop right there. Working hard is good, but let's work smart. Let's work diligently, right? In the Bible it says, a slack hand maketh poor, but the hand of the diligent, the hand of the diligent brings wealth. So yes, 
hard work is essential to your success, but can we work hard and smart? Can we do it in a way that's going to create some leverage that's going to be scalable? Here's what I mean by that. You can work hard and make no money. Digging ditches is hard work. Doing construction is hard work. There's a lot of things that's hard work, but they're not going to get you ahead in your life. So just, we have to think about that. We have to think about what is our philosophy around these type of things. You know, years and years ago, I read a book called Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. I don't know if you've ever heard of that book. Anybody ever read it? If you have, put a note in the comment section so I know that you're with me. But just reading that book, I was probably 19, 20 years old, and it helped me change my philosophy about my finances. Here I was, you know, a young, I was a hairdresser at the time, and I was like, wow, there is another way of living. There is another way of doing life to where you're not always exchanging time for dollars, right? Like some people work and other people build networks. They build businesses. They build things that go on without them. Like you can be somewhere else. You can be on a beach somewhere, and the the, the part that makes you money can continue to work and continue to grow. And I'm, I'm sure if you're in network marketing, that's one of the things that caught your attention is how to create something like that in your life, right? With minimal startup costs and you know not much uh, know-how around the subject, but how can we do that? And so, you know, these are just my thoughts, my takeaways for you from the time that I spent with an incredible leader, a thought leader. You know, it's not every day you get around somebody that's been in network marketing for 40 years and made, you know, millions and millions of dollars, right? So you want to pick their brain as much as possible. And so at the end of the day, I would share with you guys, do something to change your philosophy. Do something to change the caliber of your thinking. Do something to help you push the envelope. Now, what does this look like? It's something you do on a daily basis. It's personal development. Whether you're reading a book, you know, some of the most successful people in business, people that make seven and eight figures a year, there's one common thing that I've seen anytime I've ever spent time with them. And that is they are voracious readers. Like they just take in so many different world perspectives and philosophy ideas on different things. Most of them have told me that they have read a book a week for five, 10, 15, 20 years, like forever, okay? Now, that may be a little overhaul, and you might be like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I could even do that, but just think about it. Like, the more you read, the more you learn, the more you take in, the more your net worth goes up, right? Because we have a different way of thinking. We're changing our philosophy about how things are done. And so, you know, I have something that has come up with, for me, that has been an, just an easy way to start doing that. Do you know about books on CD? right? Audiobooks. You know, nowadays you can put an app in your phone. My favorite, one of my favorites is audible.com. You, if you look for any audiobook, they're probably the first one that comes up. They do a lot of advertising, but you know what? I have book after book after book, and it's easy to go through a book a week. If you're listening, if you're doing audio reading, right? You just play it. You can even make it go a little bit faster. So it's not on, you know, uh, it's not going at the speed of one. It can go like 1.2 or 1.5 or whatever. So you can go through it quicker. And it's amazing how much you can learn and grow. Over this past six months, personal development has been such a core element in my life. Why? Because I want to take so many different areas to the next level. And I believe you can do the same thing. If you just say, hey, you know what? What's an area of my life I want to improve? Like we're all not where we want to be, right? Do you have dreams and goals that you are actually still in the process of achieving? Be it in your health or be it in your finances or be it in your business or be it in your relationships. Think about what that subject is and then think about, you know what? Hey, how can I start doing, how can I start pushing the envelope so this goes faster? So this is not something that takes five years or 10 years. You know, it's amazing because when my husband and I first met and we got together, I was a hairdresser and he was a metal grinder, okay? So we're talking that goes back a long time, but because we focus so much on changing the caliber of our thinking, changing the set of our sale, changing our philosophy, you know, we've been able to do, you know, income wise, you know, 10 exit many times over more in a month than we used to make in a year. Like if you want to transform your life, transform your philosophy. And when you do, everything will change for you. Now, one of the things that has been so very helpful, not only in network marketing and business, but understanding the concept of scaling. Now, if you don't know what scaling is, don't worry. I didn't know what it was before either. But scaling is basically creating a business model that works without you being there, right? Like when you think about like Pepsi, Nike, big, when you think about big companies, 
Whoever is the CEO of that company, they're not doing everything. They have a lot of other levels of management that help for the greater good of what takes place. And so it gives them free time to be able to do different things, to be able to think about, hey, where do we want to take this business in the future? What do we want to see happen down the road? You know, it was interesting because I spent time last week, um, I was getting some coaching from a gentleman that's helped take many, many different companies to, you know, billions of dollars. Like this guy was in marketing and advertising. That was his background. And just understanding, he's like, what's your goal? What's your vision? How big do you want to take this? What do you see in the next 20 years or 30 years or 50 years? And when you just start thinking about your life and your business from that kind of perspective, it's just a different way of thinking, right? And you can do this. Anybody can do this. So I would just encourage you, commit to personal development. Commit to finding something that you want to improve, that you can focus on, and then start getting different thoughts, different philosophies on that subject so you can change, so that you can grow, and so that you can go to the next level. So coming back to scaling, one of the things that I learned with scaling is that if we can scale what we do in network marketing, we're like light years ahead of the crowd, okay? And here's what I mean by that. In network marketing, you have going wide, right? People you personally sponsor, and you have driving depth. The people in your team, everybody else, right? The wider your business is, I don't care what compensation plan you have, I don't care what company you're working with, they all have one thing in common. The wider your business is, the more profitable your company will be, your organization, your distributorship, okay? So we know we have to prospect, we know we have to recruit. But if we could set some things in motion to where people were reaching out to you so that you could be, you know, here it is, it's the dead of winter some places, some people are still getting snow. If you had your business to a scalable point to where you could be in Jamaica, in Hawaii, in the area of your choice that is beautiful, right, and warm, <laughs> and while you're there and your toes are in the sand and you've got your fruity drink next to you and you're feeling awesome, you happen to look at your phone and there's people inboxing you. They want to know about what you're doing. They want to know, they want that lifestyle. They want what you got. And so what am I talking about? I'm talking about using social media to attract prospects to you, to get them reaching out to you. I mean, like if you opened your inbox in the morning, you had two, three, four, five people messaging you every single day, wanting to know more, would that change some things for you? I mean, I would think so, right? So how can you learn about this? If you click on the link that's listed in the description, you're going to get a something that will help you with your philosophy, something that will help you lay the foundation so you can start applying these things in your business and getting prospects coming your way. So take care, be blessed, and I will see you all next time. For more great training and to receive your free MP3 download on how to attract prospects using social media, the four essential elements to attracting prospects, visit summergeronimo.com.